half a million tons of nitrous oxide, half a million tons of volatile organic compounds, and worse, clouds of carcinogen-coated fine particles that public health experts fear cause far wider damage than asbestos to the lungs of Australians, 70% of whom live in traffic-congested cities. I am very concerned that the polluter, namely the fossil fuel producer, are augmenting their profits by shifting the cost of these health impacts onto the community, the taxpayer. I find that is utterly immoral. The Australian Medical Association joined the call for the oil companies and the Australian government to clean up toxic additives in Australian fuel back in 2005. The AMA's public health director then was Dr Margaret Sherguin. There's a very wide range of um, lung problems that are associated with it. Asthma, bronchitis, alveolitis, which causes people basically to have difficulty doing their daily activities when the pollution levels are high. Increased cardiovascular risk, so increased um, chances of having a heart attack. Overall, Australia has one of the cleanest fuel standards in the world. We meet to Euro 4 diesel, 50 ppm sulfur going down to 10, 2009. We have low benzene petrol. In fact, in the Asian region, we have some of the strictest regulations on fuels. What we are seeing is, is the level of, of pollutants in those fuels decreased. And we have seen as, as a government at the same time an improvement in the standard of, of, uh, of, of normal fuel being sold through the bowser. We have dirtier fuel than um, Europe or the US. Um, they have set um, more severe restrictions on sulphur, more severe restrictions on the aromatic components. That's things like benzene, which are very carcinogenic. The AMA called for a variety of measures, including the mandatory replacement of 10% of petrol with ethanol, an alcohol produced from grain or sugar plants to oxygenate the fuel, to make it burn hotter and destroy more carcinogens. And 20% of diesel with biodiesel to reduce sulfur emissions and the general use of highly toxic fuel additives. But the AMA's policy prompted a strong reaction from the major oil companies, whose representative body, the Australian Institute of Petroleum, soon paid the Australian Medical Association a visit that meeting they were certainly trying to get the AMA to back away from its call for mandatory 10% ethanol in all petrol in Australia. And um, as I say, we agreed to disagree. The Institute of Petroleum would not be interviewed by the 7.30 report. But the federal government, which receives some $14 billion a year in lucrative fuel excise taxes, still chooses to ignore the AMA's concern and those of other public health experts. I guess I feel very pessimistic that the government's going to feel this is anything they really need to react to and, and do something about. 